talking about solutions. So some of the things we're going to be doing is finding the strength of a solution, determining the amount of solute in a given solution, and then performing various calculations. A solution is formed by taking a pure drug and dissolving it in a liquid. So you have this pure drug, which we call the solute, and we dilute it or dissolve it in a liquid, and this forms a solution. So the strength of this would be a ratio between the amount of the pure drug and the amount of the entire solution. So you basically just perform the division to find the strength. The pure drug, the amount of the pure drug divided by the solution. So some examples of strengths might be five milligrams per milliliter. So what this says is that you have five milligrams of your pure drug for every one milliliter of solution. Another example here, you would have 25 milligrams of your pure drug for every five milliliters of solution. Now strengths are given as ratios, fractions, or percents, and sometimes they're given without explicit units of measurement. So the previous slide, the units of measurement were there. We saw milligrams per milliliters. There was also grams per liter, um, but sometimes the, the solutions are, um, the units are left off. And I'll explain in the next slide what you assume when this is the case. So for example, your solution, um, your strength might be one to two, um, which basically says you have one part drug for every two part solution. Um, you can write that as one half strength. You can write that same thing as 50% strength. So when you have your strength of your solution, if the units are not given, then you assume that the amount of the drug, the solute, is either grams or milliliters unless otherwise stated. So again, if, if you don't see the units, it's either grams or milliliters for the drug, the amount of the drug. And then the amount of the solution is milliliters. So for example, if you have a strength as one to 100 sodium chloride, for this example, notice there's no units. So we assume that it's one gram of sodium chloride for every 100 milliliters of solution. Now, the reason why we use grams here is because sodium chloride would be measured, it's a dry measure. In the next example, we have one third strength solution of iodine, which notice there's no units again, so you assume that it's one milliliter of iodine for every three milliliters of solution. So the difference here, why we use milliliters instead of grams, like the previous example, is because iodine is a liquid, so you would use liquid measures. And then the last example, 7% magnesium sulfate would mean 7 grams of magnesium sulfate for every 100 milliliters of solution. So you know that it's going to be um, 100 milliliters for each of these. Well, for the first and the last example, the first one here, 100, because it was explicitly stated one for every 100. So one gram for every 100 milliliters. On the last one, this last example, 7 grams in 100 milliliters, we know that it's 100 milliliters because percent, because you see the percent sign, percent means out of 100. Okay, so that's how we know it's 100 milliliters of solution. So let's try an example. What is the strength of a 500 milliliter solution that contains 50 milliliters of iodine? So we use our formula that strength is the amount of the drug divided by the amount of the solution. So because both of those are given, we just perform the division. So we know that it's 50 milliliters of iodine, so that's going to be our numerator. And then we divide that by the amount of the solution, which is 500 milliliters. So all we do is simplify our fractions here, and then we get 1 over 10. So the strength is 1 to 10, every one part um, drug for every 10 part solution. You could say 1 tenth strength, or you could say 10 percent strength. In this example, we want to find the strength of 200 milliliters of solution um, that contains 50 grams of sodium chloride. So we use our same setup, and the amount of the drug was given, 50 grams. So we divide that by the amount of the solution that was given, which is 200 milliliters. We simplify our fractions. We know that 50 goes into 200 as well as itself. So 50 divided by 50 is 1, for, uh, 200 divided by 50 is 4, so that's how we get 1 fourth, or 25% as our strength. 
and you can write it the three different ways. You can write the strength as 1 to 4, 1 fourth, or 25 percent. Okay, so how many grams here in this example of dextrose would you need to prepare a thousand milliliters of a 5% solution? This example is kind of interesting. It's different because this is the first example where we don't actually know the amount of the drug. We don't know the solute. We're given the strength and the solution amount. So we need to find the amount of solute, the drug. So 100, 1,000, excuse me, milliliters is given for the solution. So that's going to be our denominator, 1,000 milliliters. And then the percent of the solution is given, which is a strength. The percent represents the strength. So if we write our strength, if we write 5% as a fraction, because percent means out of 100, we would write 5% as 5 over 100. So then we convert this and we would say this is 5 grams for every 100 milliliters. So we just put our units on there because dextrose would be a dry measure, so it's grams, and then our solution would be um, 100 milliliters, okay? So then, because we know that be on, based on the given information, we have 1,000 milliliters of solution, we basically just have to take our strength and multiply it by the amount of our solution. So right here, this is the strength that we determined, this is 5%, and then we multiply it by the amount of the solution. And that's going to give us our grams, what we're looking for. So we simplify. Basically, you take 1,000 milliliters, divide it by 100 milliliters, and that's going to give us 10. So it ends up being right here, if you notice, 10 times 5, so 50 grams. So you would need 50 grams of dextrose to prepare 1,000 milliliters of a 5% solution. In this example, we're going to figure out how to prepare 250 milliliters of a 1.5% creosol solution. So we're given that creosol comes in liquid form. So the amount of the solution was given, it was 250 milliliters, and then the strength of the solution was given as 1.5%. So we want to write that as a decimal, so that would be 0.5%. Now what this means, because it's percent, 0.5% tells us that that's 0.5 out of 100. So we have 0.5 milliliters of our drug over 100 milliliters of our solution. So notice here for our strength um, equation at the bottom, I included creosol in the name, in, in the amount basically for our drug, and I included the word solution in the denominator because they're both in milliliters. Okay, So you can do this if it helps if the units are the same, which they are because both of these are a liquid. Now we want to convert our 250 milliliters to some amount of 250 milliliters of solution to some amount of milliliters of our drug creosol. So we're going to take our amount of solution and we're going to multiply it by our strength. So we already know the strength, and so we just take the strength and we multiply it by the solution. And then that's going to give us what we're looking for. So we take 250 milliliters of solution. We're going to simplify this fraction here, so notice milliliters of solution divide out. Our, what we're left with is milliliters of creosol, exactly what we wanted. And then we work with our numbers. So we basically, you take 250, you multiply it by 0 0.5, and then you divide that answer by 100. So 250 times 0 0.5, and then divide by 100. And you'll end up with 1.25, or 1 and 25 hundredths milliliters of creosol. Okay, so 1.25 milliliters of creosol is diluted with water to 250 milliliters of solution. For this example, we want to know how many milliliters of a 20% magnesium sulfate solution will contain 40 grams of the solute magnesium sulfate. So notice what the question is asking. It's asking for how many milliliters of solution. So this is the first example where we don't actually know the amount of solution. We do know the strength, it's the 20%, and we know the amount of solute, that's 40 grams. So we're solving for solution. So we're gonna take the 40 grams of our pure drug and we're gonna, we're gonna convert it to milliliters of solution. Okay, so that's what we wanna figure out. 
in a 20% solution, because that was a given strength, we know that 20 grams are solute, and then that's for every 100 grams of solution, I'm sorry, 100 milliliters of solution. So the 20% strength implies that we have 20 grams solute for every 100 milliliters of solution. So we have our 20 grams of solute for 100 milliliters of solution. That's our strength. And so we're going to take our 40 grams, which was our amount of drug, um, our solute, and we're going to multiply it by, notice what this is right here. This is the reciprocal of our strength. So our strength was given, this is 20% right here, 20% strength. We end up multiplying our solute, our 40 grams, by the reciprocal of the strength. And that is going to end up giving us what we're looking for, which is the solution. Right, I'll sum this up with some equations right after we finish this example. So when we simplify this, we take 40 divided by 20, and we end up getting 2 over 1. So 2 times 100, and that's in milliliters. So that's going to give us 200 milliliters of our solution. Notice that the grams divided out. So 200 milliliters of a 20% magnesium sulfate solution contains 40 grams of magnesium sulfate. So our original strength equation was strength equals solute over solution, solute divided by solution. Now, we've done a couple of examples where we ended up multiplying by the solution to find the solute. So that would be the second form of the equation. So notice that this is actually the same equation, but the difference is that we took the solution and we multiplied by it. So if you multiply the fraction here that I just underlined by the solution, notice solution will go away, it will divide out. But then whatever you do to the right side of an equation, you have to do to the left side. So that's why we end up with solution over here. So we've actually used this version of the equation already. Solution times strength equals a solute. All right, now there's a third version of the equation which we used for the first time in this example. And so that would be that the solution is equal to the solute times one over the strength. One over the strength is the same thing as the reciprocal of the strength. So notice all three versions of our equation. The original is the one that we were given at the beginning and we've started with and used for the first few examples. Notice what we are solving for with the original equation. We are solving for strength. And now the second equation, right over here, the second equation, we're solving for solute. So we know that solute is solution times strength. Then the third and final equation we're solving for solution. So sol solution is solute times one over the strength, or basically you flip over the strength. Like in our example, we had our 20 grams over 100 milliliters, and we flipped it over, 100 over 20. So these are all three the same equation, but we, we solved for different components of it. We solved for the strength in equation one, we solved for the solute in equation two, and we solve for the solution in equation three. So you can have all three versions of this equation to solve for the missing component, whatever you don't know. So you always know two out of the three things, you solve for the third thing, the, th the one that you don't know. In this example, we wanna know how many ounces of a full strength drug, drug A, are needed to make 16 ounces of a one fourth strength or quarter strength drug A. Okay, so we need to know the amount of the drug. So the solute is what's missing here. So one fourth strength means one out of four. So one part, in this case ounces, drug A for every four parts or four ounces of solution. So for a 16 ounce solution, which is what we're um, looking for, or which, what we have, we need to know how much of our drug is in that solution. So we have to use our equation to find the drug, the amount of solute. So notice our setup here, we have the amount of the solution. And then we multiply that by the strength. So from the previous example where we um, identified our three versions of our equation, this would be the solution times the strength equals the solute, or equation two. And so if we simplify, we end up getting um, our ounces divide out for solution. 
16 divided by 4 gives us a 4 on, in the numerator, and so we get 4 times 1 equals a total of 4, so 4 ounces of our drug. 4 ounces of full strength drug A are needed to make 16 ounces of quarter strength drug A. So the 16 ounces was the solution, and the 4 ounces is the solute, the drug. All right, so let's summarize what we talked about um, in the important information. The strength of a solution is a ratio of the amount of solute, which is the amount of the pure drug, dissolved in the solution to the total volume of the solution. So it's the ratio or the division between the amount of the drug and the amount of the solution. Okay, so you just divide the amount of the drug by the amount of the solution, and that gives you the strength. The strength of a solution can be expressed in a number of forms. We saw them. It can be a ratio, a fraction, or a percentage. And then you want to make sure that if it's going to be a percent specifically, that you see a percent sign. So one half strength doesn't mean one half solution, or I'm sorry, one half percent solution. So it's only a percent if you see the percent sign. The amount of solute dissolved in the solution should be expressed in milliliters if the solution is liquid and should be expressed in grams if the solution is solid or powder. So unless the units are given, you assume that the solute, the amount of drug, is milliliters for liquid or grams for solid or dry. Okay, And then um, that's the standard units. And then the amount of the solution is always going to be milliliters, again, unless otherwise stated. To determine the amount of solute contained in a given amount of solution of known strength, use the strength as the known equivalence. So basically what this means here is that if you want to find the solute, which we did do some examples where we solve for solute, then you're going to basically take your solution and multiply it by your strength. To determine the amount of a solution um, of known strength containing a given amount of solute, use strength as a known equivalence. So basically this is equation 3 that we discussed. So this is the version where you solve for the solution and you end up multiplying by the reciprocal of the strength. So you basically flip the strength over and times that by your solute. So solute times 1 over the strength or the reciprocal of the strength. And then the strength of a particular solution can be written in many different forms, and then the following are equivalent. So we have, with stated units of measure, um, 500 milligrams per milliliter, or oh, so notice I'm saying it, I'm saying per milliliter, but I'm actually reading this first line here. Um, and then the second line, the middle line, 500 milligrams per milliliter. So we read them out loud the same, and then the last one, 500 milligrams per one milliliter. They're all equivalent. Okay. Now, if without the given unit of measurements, then you can still state the strength. And we have our three forms. We can write it as a fraction, so one half strength. We can write it as a ratio, one to two, one parts solute for two parts solution, and then as also as a percentage, 50%. Okay, so that's it for solutions.